Hey guys, so today I was at work, not doing work, and I came across a guide that I wrote for Holy a few months back that I never ended up making because for some reason when I'm getting ready to sit down and talk about something for a while, I get kind of intimidated or I worry a lot about the words I'm going to use and how I describe it. So. I end up getting frustrated or I end up not liking what I say and then I just kind of get discouraged from making it. But I actually decided that I would uh, resub to get some content and maybe put some more information out there just because I guess I do enjoy making these videos and um, I feel like there's a lot of tidbits that I could try to include that I never really mentioned and I do feel like a lot of people could still use that information. So I just resubbed today. I feel like once you look through several of these examples, you can see how small movements can still make a pretty big difference. You just have to be smart about it and you have to anticipate what boss mechanic is going to happen and then just be one step ahead of the curve. So the first thing that I want to talk about is maximizing your movement. Um, I've included a couple boss fight clips to showcase what I mean by that. And there's actually a lot of instances where I do it, which is great. So it provides a better understanding as to what I mean. So what I noticed on Serpentrix is that the poison debuff you get where you drop a pole underneath, you don't actually take too much damage when you're standing in the pole. So if you notice, at the very start of the fight or just throughout every time I got it I would only step out of the pool if I had void bolt up that way I wouldn't waste my movement not dealing damage so basically what I mean is just that every time I have void bolt up since it is an instant cast I move my character during the global cooldown that way I wouldn't be losing any damage because you can't cast anything during that time anyways so I tend to just inch my character every time I have a global cooldown and that way you're not losing any damage at all. Also it's a little similar to when he casts Poison Bolt. If you are lucky to have the timing around the same time where you would be casting Void Bolt anyways, it's okay to delay the cast by maybe some small interval less than a second. That way when you cast Void Bolt, you are simultaneously moving out of the green zone where it's about to land. There was some issue with the fight. I don't know if it was a bug or if they secretly patched it in a while ago where sometimes those poison bolts would land really quickly, much faster than they used to be. So if that's the case, then obviously it's kind of hard to avoid it if they have varying speeds. This fight really isn't all that bad once you kind of maximize your movement and dot up both of the adds. For the adds, I would always just stun one first for the Sefu's proc, and then I would silence the subsequent cast. And then after that, you don't really have any more interrupts, so you just have to DPS them down. R E. So on the Naga boss fight, if you actually do all your movements correctly, you will pretty much never lose DPS. So you see that after the first Static Nova, I just start doing my movements during the global cooldowns to get into the water. So here you can see that after the Focus Lightning cast finishes, I start inching myself to the right, directly onto the platform. But then since I noticed that the tornado was spawning directly to the left of me, I would move to the next platform on the right. That way, if it breaks the platform that I was going to during the Static Nova cast, then I'm just pretty much screwed. So it's always better to be proactive instead of reactive. Boss fights are pretty predictable in terms of what happens. So since you know that it's Static Nova and then Focus Lightning and then it repeats always like that, you can always position yourself really well to make sure that you will never have issues with those two main mechanics. Everything else is just staying alive from Focus Lightning. Once the keys get higher, they will hit really hard. And then just stunning the adds for the Sefu's procs every time your Mind Bomb is up.
So for this fight, you oh. can see that I start mm -hmm. off with having one of the critter crabs as my focus target. The way I've been doing this fight is that I would set one of those critters to my focus, and once my mind bomb cooldown is up, I would use it on one of those, and then try to grab another one in between globals. That way, I don't have to manually click on them later on when my mind bomb is up. I can just use my keybind to target my focus, and then I just end up using it. So it's really helpful because I didn't know a couple months back that you could proc Sefus by stunning them. I don't really think of stuff like that very often. Somebody else told me that. So that is definitely a tip that you should always use for this fight. Also, just one more small thing that I was actually kind of irritated about was that I had forgotten to switch my gear set to single target. So during this fight, I was actually wearing Sefus and wrists, which is what I usually wear for trash. And I do think that I could have probably gotten more damage out of it if I went belt and Sefus, so just something to keep in mind when it comes to my final damage. Okay, so for Curator, the main thing that you want to maximize your movement for is when he has those blue swirling pools that appear underneath your feet and you have to move out of them. They are actually really important to try to avoid taking damage from because they do hit pretty hard. And I have noticed that the graphic is kind of pretty wide. Um, in terms of the visual, you kind of want to make sure your character is a decent amount away from the edge to make sure you don't take any damage. There are definitely times where I feel like my character is visually outside of the circle, but I still take damage, so make sure you give yourself a comfortable buffer. Something to keep in mind is that I do think unless you move immediately after it spawns with an instant cast, I think that you're going to take damage from it. So either be extremely fast with moving or you have to use power shield for that global. The only exception to that would be if you get a Sefus proc. Actually, I lied, there's nothing to proc Sefus on for this fight, so I would get my Trinket proc, Chrono Shard, which would allow me to have oh, faster nice. movement speed, which is the only way that I'm able to run out of okay. the zone in time without taking damage. There were a few instances of that throughout this fight, but it's also extremely important to DPS the adds, they are highest priority, so for a lot of this fight, it's going to feel like you're not doing any damage to Curator, you just have to let your dots take him down, and then only during evocation is when you are focusing your damage on him. Usually the instant cast that you're using to move at the same time with is Void Bolt, but since there are adds spawning during this fight, it's also convenient to Shadow or Pain them and move if you need to move out of a zone. Of course, you don't always want to box yourself in to only those two casts. It's always better to take less damage instead of sitting in these pools and eating all of them just to do DPS. For Dressaran, I actually started off the fight a little bit too far from the boss, but you can see that for every Void Bolt cast, I moved myself in closer to the boss. He tends to do downdraft right away, or if he doesn't, at least you are close enough to him where if it is Earth Shaking Roar, it's not too much of a big deal, but if you are far away from downdraft, you are completely fucked. So it's always better to start off the fight closer to him than farther away. During the downdraft cast, I would say that you want to make sure you stay within the red targeting circle for the first few seconds. 
I usually rotate between Power Word Shield, Void Bolt, and Shadow Word Pain as my instant cast. However, once the cast is more than halfway done, I always let him push me back because then I get to free cast and usually by that time he isn't going to be casting long enough to push you into the eggs. Alright, so those were the few boss fights that I thought were pretty good examples of what I mean where movement really makes a difference. Um, you don't want to make too many unnecessary movements, and even if you move a small bit at a time, it can be enough to make sure that you never lose damage from something like movement, which is a pretty big deal for casters. Those were also the only fights that I was able to record through whichever runs I ended up doing, so hopefully they are good enough examples that people understand what I mean. If you still have any questions, feel free to leave the comment down below, and I will definitely get back to you. But thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.